All right, oil change time for the Mooney. So uh, I use these Tempest filters, these guys. Um, a little bit cheaper than Champions, and I've heard the quality of the Champions has been kind of going downhill recently. Obviously, Blackstone analysis kit. You can't just use any automotive one. you got to get their uh, aviation one. So they're free to send them. You know, they'll usually send you like four at a time or something like that. Um, and then I'm just using some W80 that I have lying around. We're getting towards fall, and the weather's getting a little better. Lycoming says you can use this stuff between 30 degrees, and I believe it's 80 or 90 degrees. And that's pretty much where the weather's been, so we're just going to use it up before winter hits. Other than that, I usually run 2050, but I just want to get rid of this stuff. It was from my last plane, and I want to stick with 2050 from now on. So this is pretty much it. I'm just going to pull the plane out, run the engine up, get the oil uh, a little bit more uh, stirred up and warm so it drains out easier. Clear prop! Now's a good time to just look around and look for oil leaks. Um, the only spot where I see oil is collecting is right here, which makes sense because we fill it up here and it's pretty easy to spill. But other than that, on the bottom of the cowling, um, it actually looks remarkably clean in there. It's kind of hard to see without a light. All the rest of these look good. Um, don't see any signs of oil on the bottom there, on our cowl flaps. Uh, everything else up here looks pretty dry, so I think we're in good shape. let this drain for a couple minutes and then I'll come collect my sample. Alright, that's probably good enough. Just go ahead and dip that. It doesn't need to be all the way full. I'll generally get it about three quarters of the way full just for expansion and everything. So while that's draining, I'm going to go ahead and pull the oil uh, filter out, which is in a really terrible spot on these. Moonies are notoriously tight and this is kind of the, uh, the bane of my existence with these oil changes. There's absolutely no way to get a rag or anything underneath this filter, and a little bit is going to drip out when you pull that filter out. So you really have no option but to make a mess. It'll drip oil all over the cowling and all over the nose gear. It'll end up dripping down, and you just got to clean it up later. There's really no other way around it. So we're just going to go ahead and clip the lock wire for this guy, and then I don't have a wrench that'll fit that, so I'm just going to use channel locks to loosen the back of it up. They're usually going to be kind of a pain. It'll be a little bit tight the first... Uh, first round or so um, just because it's everything's still warm and uh, definitely make sure to take care when you're working around these cylinders because these are probably still a couple hundred degrees and you don't want to touch even the shroud around them all right so now I got it loose enough just watch the lock wire so you don't cut yourself but I got it loose enough where I can just spin it off by hand and it's gonna fortunately these are positioned sideways so it's not gonna get you full of oil um, well, that was actually a pretty clean pull so I'll just tip it up and set it down on the lid overall that was pretty clean we're gonna get the rest of that lock wire out of there that's still kind of stuck on there and then we'll get the new filter in so the instructions on these filters do say to put these on dry I don't agree with that um, I almost always oil the o-ring of these filters it just helps it go and come off a little bit easier when you go to take it off um, it's not gonna leak it's not gonna do anything crazy it's obviously not gonna come off because it's lock wired and I mean these things still never come off it's just a very thin layer of oil on this ring you can grab it from when it's still draining and that'll just help it uh, spin off a little bit easier when you go to change it next time. All right, so just want to double check again, make sure that there's no lock wire in that hole. Nothing's too crazy. The filter itself looks clean. Since we're detail oriented, I wiped off the white part on the outside of the ring. Got some oil on there. And we'll just go ahead and feed this guy in and start spinning it on. And then I just tighten it until it's hand tight and then lock wire it. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to hold the camera, but basically I'm going to pick a direction so that you're kind of pulling it tight is the way you can think about it. So if our uh, if our ring is right here, 
uh, where we're tying into, we're going to want to put it, you know, maybe back on this one on the left side of the plane. That way we're angling it this way, right? Because if we twist it this way to loosen, that'll stop it from being able to twist it that way. If we went the opposite way and we brought it over to here, that would still be able to, to turn. Um, and then that lock wire would just kind of wrap around until it got tight. So it'd be able to get like a quarter turn out of it. So you always want to, you know, tighten it so that it's, think of it as you're, you're tightening the filter back on when really you're just securing it in place. And this is gonna be hard to see, I apologize. Um, I'm gonna kinda of angle this lock wire out just a little bit so when I go to feed it through, I can actually get it through. Let me get some more light down there. Oh, come on, we'll just grab the pliers. This stuff's pretty strong, it's stainless. Okay, that's roughly even. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know pull this tight and then see how far it is to that hole where it needs to go through. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit because it will tighten down when you twist it. And you can always untwist a couple turns if you need to. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and latch the lock wire pliers down on that spot. Yep, right there's about where I want it. And we'll just go ahead and twist. All right, so I've got this untwisted to where when I pull it on here, it'll be still nice and tight and meet up quite a bit. Um, and then I'm just gonna feed it through the hole there and then tighten it again. And then we'll just kind of loop it over on itself. We'll cut it off um, so that there's, you know, maybe about an inch remaining and then we'll just kind of fold it over. That way when you put your hands in there, you know, you don't cut them when you're looking at something else. Now comes the really fun part, which is pulling all of this tight and then twisting it against that hole that we just put it through. Oops. And we'll have to fish that out later. And then we'll just go ahead and fold this back on itself. There we go. That guy's done. All right, so it looks like we're pretty much done draining. It's just some drips out of there for now. So I'm going to go ahead and unhook this. Just twist that. And it pulls out. And then I can go ahead and pull this hose off. And I'll just let the remainder drain out into this bucket. So now our... Uh Drain plug twist lock thing is secured. Oil filter's back on, it's properly lock wired. We checked everything over, nice and folded over, all good. Um, so now really all that's left on the airplane side of things is to go ahead and put more oil in. So I'm kind of pro tip with this, and I don't know if it works with the AeroShell, but I know it works with the Phillips, is the threads on this are actually similar enough to the ones for the dipstick that you can kind of just thread this bottle in and twist it and it'll stay for the most part. Yeah, I don't think these are good enough. Nope, well with the Phillips bottles, oh, there we go, we got a little bit. So with the Phillips bottles and with these, I guess, the Phillips work better. Uh, you can just do that and then let it drain in if you need to use your hands for something else. Clean up while this is draining out, because again, this stuff's not very cheap. You wanna get every ounce of it you possibly can. Yeah, so here's what I mean about this making a mess. You can see it, you know, leak down all in there. Um, and then it'll leak all over the nose wheel, all over the tire, and you'll get a nice little puddle on the ground. So obviously we need to clean that up. Um, I just use, I've got some purple Zepta greaser. Every so often I'll really wipe the cowl down good, the bottom of that, and just get all the oil off. And then that way I can kind of gauge how much is leaking out of the engine every, every given time. You don't have to do it every single oil change, but it's a, I think it's a pretty good idea just to really be able to gauge everything. <clears throat> you can see all that crap is just leaking down.